Lord, we just pray over your word now, Lord. We ask that you open our hearts to receive something special from you today. Touch us, Lord, we pray. Leave us with something that we can take with us, Lord. We'll minister to our hearts in the weeks to come. We just ask this, Jesus, in your wonderful name. Amen. I got a brief illustrative message this morning. Today is our Bring a Friend Sunday, and we play condense things a little so we can have more time on fellowship, but we also need to look into God's Word a little bit, so we can do that this morning. My message title is Our Two Natures. All of us have two natures, the flesh and the spirit, and they're constantly in a tug-of-war against <coughs> with each other. And we'll look at that this morning. Romans 8, 5 says, For those who live according to the flesh set their minds on the things of the flesh, but those who live according to the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. So, if you're living according to the flesh, your mind is going to be set on fleshly things. But if you're living according to the Spirit, you're going to be set on spiritual things. Romans 7, 15-19 says, For what I am doing I do not understand. For what I will to do, that I do not practice. But what I hate, that I do. Anybody ever find yourself in that situation? You know, the thing that I want to do, I don't do. I don't understand, but the thing that I don't want to do, that's the thing that I wind up doing. For I know that in me, that is in my flesh, nothing good dwells, for it will. For to will is present with me, but how to perform what is good, I do not find. The will is there, but for some reason you don't find how to perform the thing that's good. For the good that I will to do, I do not do. But the evil I will to do, that I practice. So you see this war that goes on in us. And sometimes in the cartoons it was kind of illustrated by having this little devil and a little angel on your shoulder. Remember the cartoons? A little devil telling you, go in, do that. Nobody's going to know what you're doing it. No, don't do that. That would be wrong. Oh, don't listen to him. Do it. No, listen to God. Don't listen to that. <coughs> Back and forth. You know, kind of goes on in our mind, doesn't it? We've got these two little critters on us that represent our two natures. We go through that battle all the time. Sometimes we just find ourselves doing something. Why am I doing this? This isn't what I wanted to do. This is what my flesh wanted. And we're constantly in a battle. It's because there's two natures within us that are constantly fighting against each other. <coughs> we can call this the old and the new nature. I'm going to represent them here today with these two glasses of liquid. The dark one representing that old nature, that sinful nature, that nature that we tried to get rid of when we accepted Christ as our Savior. But there's this other nature. When we accept Christ as our good nature. But the problem is, some people allow their nature to be cleaned up and to be transformed, but they think that they can continue to live with both natures. They think you can mix them together, but what happens when you mix them together? Now that looks nice when we put in the new nature, but when we try to mix in the old nature, it all looks like the old nature, doesn't it? Because you can't mix the two together. You need to separate them. We need to keep those natures separated, don't we? So to remind us, there was what? Nature? old nature. You're paying attention. Just, you know, that's the test. Just making sure. And then there's the new nature. the new nature. And we have to let God separate the two, don't we? Sometimes when they're warring with each other, we need to pray and ask God, help us. Separate the old from the new. I don't want them both together. We need to let Him take it from us. Let Him take 
those natures and separate them. So while we're praying and asking Him to take them and separate them, let Him have it. But how many of you sometimes battle with those two natures? You see, we can't live with both of them because the old nature will always take over when we give in to the flesh. The flesh is strong. I mean, battle with your flesh sometimes. I battle with my flesh. Sometimes it gets angry. Sometimes it does things I don't want it to do. But I don't want to live that way. I want to let the spiritual nature take over. I want to let God take the two and separate them and keep them separate. The old nature and the new nature. The bad things we do. We want them separate, taken away, no longer influencing our life. We want the old nature here. We want the new nature over there. Separate and kept apart. That's how we want it to be, isn't it? beast that's inside of you because if you are it's going to get larger on all that fleshly food that you're offering it, the things of this world and the spiritual man remains skinny and weak but what if we set that table with spiritual food God's word, prayer fellowship getting together with the other Christians we're feeding our spirit man then the fleshly part of us is going to be weak. And the spirit man is going to grow strong. That's how we want it to be, isn't it? We need to feed our spirits. But it's so hard anymore to get people to do that. As a pastor, I feel like I'm constantly pulling at people and tugging at people, trying to get them to, to just do the basic things they should be doing as a Christian. Reading their word. Praying. Coming to church. That's getting harder and harder. But the world is, is crowding out our spiritual man. We can't let that happen. You see, what you feed grows and what you starve dies. You never satisfy anything by feeding it. You only increase its capacity to grow. I have a little friend here with me. Haven't had him out for a long time. He's going to help me illustrate this. This is my little friend, Willie. This is Wilton Willie. Round him out, Wilton. And he's going to help illustrate something this morning. You see, how many like to grow gardens and grow flowers? And they're nice, but you know that if you don't water them, if you don't feed them, what's going to happen? Yeah. <laughs> They're going to wilt, aren't they? Poor Will and Willie didn't give him enough water, and he's just wilting away. He needs a drink, doesn't he? <coughs> we need to give him some spiritual water. He needs to pray, he needs to read God's Word. And when we give him what he needs... He was thirsty. <laughs> now he's doing much better, isn't he? Well, that's how we are. We're just like Will and Willie. We don't read God's Word. We don't pray. We don't fellowship. We don't get together. We don't go to church. We're going to wilt. We don't want to wilt. We want to stand up straight, don't we? Well, thank you, Will, and that was nice for you to help us out. You can say goodbye. Say goodbye, everybody. Let him go. He's 
So we want to feed the part of us that we want to grow. Feed your spiritual man more than you feed your flesh. That's where fasting and prayer comes in sometimes. You know why we fast sometimes when we pray? It's to tell the flesh to shut up. So that we can focus on something spiritual. That's what fasting is all about. And it doesn't always have to just be food. You can fast something that you really like. Like your phone. You can fast that for a day and pray. Boy, that drives some people crazy. You know, that should be an easy thing, but there's some people, well, they'd rather give up food for a day than give this up. Well, then you really should be fasting this. <clears throat> and tell your flesh you don't need that. You don't need to look at it every few minutes. You don't need to know what's going on for a day. For me, a good fast, and one I'm going to try this month, is not watching the news. It's not just watching TV. It's the news. I'm a news junkie. Things are going on. i got to know what's going on in the world. It drives me nuts to go a day and not know what's going on. But that's a good fast. Because it gets my... Because sometimes that can feed your flesh too. You know, we just... Sometimes we need to get away and not feed our flesh. Not give our flesh what it wants. It could be a dessert. Maybe you're a dessert all of after every meal, you've got to have something. So we get that out for a day. But I want to challenge you. Make fasting and prayer part of your life. Feed the spiritual part of yourself. When you do that, you'll be amazed at how God is going to answer those prayers. And I've been challenging people to once a week, especially this month, we've got a major election coming up. I'm not here to tell you how to vote, but I'm not here to tell you that if you don't, if you're not part of the solution, you're part of the problem. Educate yourself and get out and voice your opinion. That's what a Christian should do. I'm not going to tell you how to do that, but do it. But pray for our nation. Pray for our leaders. Because the Bible tells us that God appoints them. Either for a blessing to us or for a curse to us. We want a blessing. So once a week, once in the, this month, take one day to fast something and pray. See, it doesn't do any good to just fast. You also have to pray. That's the part that builds you up spiritually. And God will answer your prayers. But pray, God, have your way in our country this November. Wake up your people. It's a simple prayer. And then every day, read the, get the daily bread. Um, read a devotional. If you don't like the daily bread, find a devotional. Or just open your Bible up a little bit each day. You'd be amazed at how much you'll grow spiritually just five minutes a day reading God's Word. If you don't like reading it on your own, get down here on Wednesday evening. At 7 o'clock, we start the Bible study. It'd be nice to give at 6.30 for prayer, but if you can't make it for that, make it for the Bible study. We're going through the Revelation. You know what's the only book in the Bible that says God will bless you if you study it? So we're studying. Sunday morning, 9.30. Going through Mark. So there's two opportunities to help you out feeding the spiritual side. John 14, 6, Jesus said to him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Jesus is the only way to the Father. There aren't a hundred ways to get to God. There's only one way. And that's through Jesus. We need to remember that. I want to illustrate that in my final thing this morning. Simple illustration. They have some balls, different colors. They're going to represent different things. This one, the red one, should be obvious to you. This is going to represent Jesus. Why red? Because Jesus died and spilled his blood so that you could go to heaven. These balls are going to represent the things of this world that feed our flesh. Money and things. People think, I just need more money. I need more things. And they're 
whole pursuit becomes after the things. And when you're doing that, you're feeding your flesh. You're not feeding the spirit, man. It said some people think it's just money. I just have more of it. If I work more, if I work harder, that's going to be the solution to all my problems in life. And I can get more things represented by the gold ball. Lots of stuff. That's what's going to give me peace and happiness and make my life wonderful. You know, stuff isn't going to do it for you. Jesus wants to be number one in your life. He wants to be at the top. Have you made him number one? Is Jesus number one to all of you? We'll put this here to remind us of where he wants to be. He wants to be number one. But see, a lot of people, as the days go by, they let all the things in the world crowd Jesus out. All their focus and attention during the week is on their stuff and getting more stuff. And Jesus winds up at the bottom. That's not where he wanted to be, is it? Help me out. Where should Jesus be? <coughs> Our stuff. Should be at the bottom. Jesus should be at the top. But you know, a lot of people they make this other mistake. And this is where they let other stuff crowd them out. See, they think Jesus just lives in his box. <coughs> Jesus is down there at the church, and I'll go visit him once in a while. Oh, I might go in the middle of the week. I might go on Sunday every once in a while. And I'll be with Jesus, but the rest of the time you forget all about it. You put him in this box. See, Jesus doesn't live in the church. The church isn't the building. The church isn't the box, is it? The church is us. And he should be with us every day. And where should he be? He should be number one. Just like that. That's where Jesus wants to be. He wants to be number one in your life. So have you made Jesus number one? Is he number one in your life? Do you want to win the battle between the flesh and the spirit? You need to make Jesus number one. And I hope you remember the illustrations this week. The flesh starts crowding out the importance of where Jesus wants to be. It's a simple message. But that's the heart of the gospel. But we're missing it in our world today. A lot of churches aren't, they're not preaching the gospel anymore. They're just preaching prosperity and good things. And, you know, that's okay once in a while. But we need to go back to the heart of the gospel once in a while to remind people that the only way they're going to get to heaven is not through how much stuff they accumulate, how much good they do on their own in this world. The only way you're going to get to heaven is by accepting Christ as your Savior. The question all of us need to ask ourselves. When you die and you're standing in heaven, and God asks you, why should I let you into heaven? How are you going to answer that question? There really is only one answer. Some people will stand before God and say, I deserve to go to heaven because I've been a good person. I've done good things. I've helped people. But you know that answer won't get you into heaven. Some people stand before God and say, I went to church my whole life. Ever since I was a child. I've gone to church. That answer is not going to get you into heaven either. See, people can have a lot of answers. There's only one answer. And that answer is that when God says, why should I let you into heaven? Because Jesus forgave me of my sins. And I accepted his sacrifice. And I believe in him. I believe that he is your son and that he rose from the dead. That's the answer that will get you into heaven. The other things you should have done anyway because of your faith in Jesus Christ. But the only thing that's going to get you into heaven is your faith in him. Not what you've done on earth. 
Let's bow our heads for just a moment. Now imagine you're standing in heaven. What would you say to God today if this were the day you stood before Him? Would you have the right answer? If not, you can make sure you have the right answer by asking Jesus into your life. By accepting that He is the Son of God who He claimed to be. Believing in your heart that He died and rose from the dead. And the willingness to tell others. The Bible says if you do that, you, you are saved. You're born again. You're a new creation. If there's anybody here today and you say, you know what, I need to dedicate my life to the Lord. I have not really done that properly. Slip your hand up for a second. And I'll pray with you. We're going to pray together, okay? Let's all pray this prayer together. <coughs> Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner. I need a Savior. So today, I ask you, Jesus, to come into my life, to take my sins away. Jesus, help me to follow you the rest of my life. Thank you, Jesus, for dying on the cross for me. In Jesus' name. Heavenly Father, I thank you and I praise you today for all those that are here and all those that will hear this message in the future. I ask you, Lord, that by your Holy Spirit, you remind us every day to feed our spirit and not our flesh. That we'll win the battle, the tug of war against our two natures. That the spirit man will grow and become strong and the flesh will grow weak. We thank you for your word, Lord. We thank you for all that you do for us. In your wonderful name we pray. Amen.